Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started with our program this evening. And on behalf of the many organizations that are represented here tonight, I want to welcome you to year number two of Queen Anne's County Goes Purple. Tonight's ceremony is going to have several different speakers that will give you information or their experiences with the opioid epidemic and the substance abuse epidemic that's sweeping our nation. Before we begin, I'm going to ask that the Scout Pack 495 post the colors, and while they're doing so, if we can have a moment of silence in memory of those that we have lost. If you would all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, boys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Sonny Jones. I'm your uh, MC for the ceremony this evening, but more importantly, I'm a proud member of the Queen Anne's County Drug-Free Coalition. Before I begin, I just want to share a few brief remarks with you, talking about going purple. So I've had a few people that have come up to me last year when we did our first go purple, and again this year, and they've said, I really don't understand what all this is about, this going purple thing. How does, how does this going purple thing really help? They said, I see the banners that you put out at the schools and the, the kids that have the purple shoelaces and things like that. You know, and, and it, I don't see how that helps. What we really need is we need more drug education for our kids. We need people to volunteer, to get out into the communities, to give people education, show them what to do, show them what resources are available to them. And I've had other people that say, you know, I see all these billboards that the Queen Anne's Goes Purple puts up on the highway. But instead of billboards, we really need better access to treatment for those that are suffering from addiction. And yet have others have said to me, you know, I've seen law enforcement officers and government officials and they all wear these nice purple t-shirts. But what, we're, what we really need are tougher laws for those that sell drugs that kill our children. And I said to all of them, mission accomplished. And they said, what do you mean? I said, go purple just made you think about all that. Go Purple and Queen Anne's County Goes Purple doesn't solve the drug problem. What it does is it brings all of us together, just like tonight. Members of the community, members of our local government, health officials, law enforcement, families that have suffered loss because of this epidemic. It brings us all together with one purpose and one message, and that's it has to stop now. What Go Purple does is it starts the discussions. It causes people to volunteer or to seek out others to volunteer. It causes people to lobby their local politicians, their state or federal politicians for tougher laws for people that sell drugs. It causes them to lobby for funds for better access to treatment. That's what Go Purple does. Mission accomplished. And just remember, it may take a whole village to raise a child but it takes a whole community to heal itself. And that's why we're here today. Thank you very much. If I can welcome up front, Pastor William Ross from the New Life Community United Methodist Church for our opening prayer. Pastor. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the people who sponsored this program tonight. But most of all, God, we ask that your Holy Spirit will go in our communities and touch those that God had been plagued by this drug abuse. And ask, Lord, that you will bring deliverance. We ask, Lord, that you might touch us, that we shall be witnesses, Lord, and that we shall be real about what we're doing. Because so many times we turn a deaf ear, turn our eyes from the problems that are confronting us. But, Lord, we ask in your name tonight that, God, that you will use us as your witness, that we might witness to those who need our help, that, God, that we can lead them to be delivered. We pray, God, for our law enforcement, 
and that God that you will protect them and keep them from hurt, harm, or danger. We pray for the first responders and that God that you would be with them. And the Lord, I pray for families who have lost people during the past year. Ask God that you would just touch them and Lord, that they will lean on you for comfort and help. That God, that they will be able to help somebody else, that they won't fall to this tragedy that drugs bring in our communities, in our homes, and in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God. Hear our prayer that God, that our community shall be healed. Amen. Now, before I invite our first speaker to the podium, I have to let you know that uh, Mr. Warren Wright, who is one of the founders of the Drug Free Coalition, at first gave me a couple of uh, index cards, and his, he said, here's some people that I want you to announce. And then three became 10, and 10 became 20. And next thing you know, I have the small version of War and Peace here to announce. So I told him, I said, Warren, I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes, Cliff Notes version, and he just gave me that evil eye. So there are a couple people that I individually want to recognize, but first and foremost, I want to thank the members and the leadership from the Callan Volunteer Fire Department for providing us with the venue for this event and for their outstanding support. <laughs> Secondly, I want to thank the members of the Drug Free Coalition themselves. Without them, this event would not be possible. The healing in our communities would not be possible, and the forward movement towards ending the scourge of drugs in our community would not be possible. So thank you to all of those. Glad the ambulance is here. Okay. So I don't forget anybody because I'm not sure if everyone's here. I'm going to say I want to personally thank the Queen Anne's County Commissioners, our local, state, and if there's any representation here, any federal delegates, representatives, senators, if you're here, please raise your hand, make yourselves known. Without you, without your lobbying behind the scenes in support of us financially, and in some cases with uh, several of our Queen Anne's County Commissioners, actually participation in the Drug-Free Coalition and making a difference, this would not be possible. So I want to thank each and every one of you. Now, real quickly, I just have a couple special people I want to recognize. Is Linda Walls here? Linda? Is she here? Okay. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Linda. For those of you who don't know, um, there's a project that's coming up very soon that actually got its uh, start. It got its roots 30 years ago called a Haunted Crack House. Now, Linda was uh, the organizer of that event, and that haunted crack house brought a reality, and um, it basically gave light to the problem of crack cocaine in our community, and Linda spearheaded that project. Well, now there's a new project called the Haunted Trap House, which is designed to do the same thing. But more importantly, I want to talk about what Linda's done recently. In order for us to be able to do some of the things that we do, it does take money, and there are grants that are available. But what Linda and her team have done is in eight days, they completed a grant and were awarded the grant, I just found out this morning, $140,000 to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education for our children. So thank you, Linda, for your efforts with that. Also, I want to thank Jim Roy, who is one of the founding members of the Queen Anne's County Drug-Free Coalition. Those of you that know Jim knows that he really likes the spotlight, so I expect him to come out here and make himself known. Uh, if uh, Todd Mott is here, our Queen Anne's County Administrator, I want to thank him. Also, Mr. Lance Richardson, our state's attorney. I did see him earlier, and if there's anybody else I missed, I apologize. We all know who you are. Please uh, make yourself known if I forgot to announce you. So first, I'd like to, our first speaker tonight will be Commissioner Jim Moran, representing the Queen Anne's County Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Moran. I don't know how much I can say. Sonny's pretty much covered a lot of that. Uh, I would like to say I'm glad to see that uh, Delegate Arntz is here and Senator Hershey and all the county commissioners are here uh, in support of Queen Anne's County Goes Purple. You know, before I was a politician, 
I've always been a father. And I've had three kids, and I love them dearly. And I can only, I can't even imagine the pain of that separation and losing a loved one. And, you know, what, what I talk about a lot with other issues in the county is hope. And, and you got to have hope. And one thing that I feel that, that the Drug Free Coalition, the Sheriff's Department, our Health Department, Emergency Services, our volunteers, uh, our faith-based community, and all of the volunteers gives me hope. Because it takes, Sonny's right, it's going to take an entire community to heal and turn this around. So I'm proud to be a part of that. Uh, you know, I, I want to say a special shout out to Warren and Kathy Wright for, you know, their leadership in this. We are now back in the high schools, you know, talking to, you know, uh, our future citizens of the county. And, and I'm grateful that I'm, I'm allowed to be a part of that. So thank you. So, you know, in, in closing, because I don't want to talk a long time, I'd just like to say thank you to all the volunteers. I mean, it, it takes a lot to be here. It takes a lot to be out there. And, you know, I think together we are making some headway. I mean, I tell Warren all the time, three years ago, we had a half a room. Now when, when the Drug Free Coalition meets, it's standing room only, and we're getting help from everybody, and especially our school board and Dr. Kane, and I'm not going to take any of her thunder because she's going to speak too. So thank you all for coming out tonight, and God bless Queen Anne's County. Thank you, Commissioner Moran. So as he stated, uh, Dr. Andrea Kane is here representing the Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Um, as I just mentioned, we just received a grant for that, and we're looking uh, very forward to the cooperation or continued cooperation with our public schools in this mission. So, Dr. Kane. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you to all of the supporters of our public schools. You know, when Sonny started talking, he started talking about someone who mentioned, well, we need more drug education in schools. And I'd like to report to you that we certainly do have drug education in schools in a variety of ways. You know, that all of our students have some aspect of health. And in those classes, there is a segment of drug education and what it takes to resist drugs. In addition to that, we certainly have a program called, it's a life skills program. And that program program teaches children about making good decisions and incorporated within that it talks to students about making good decisions about resisting drugs and what the impact of drugs are on the body. We also did at the end of last school year a, a new program and it was a good send off for our kids over the summer. You know you work just like you worry about your children we worry about your children as well because we share them with you and we sent them home with a program it was called, um, you know, Addicted to Life or life-changing experiences and different schools did different things at the secondary level at the middle school and the high school level it was an interactive program so kids because you know they like to do videos it they had a handheld device and they had an opportunity to interact with a video that they were watching and respond to that video and make good decisions about life experiences which certainly do include their choices about drugs and alcohol and I like to report that that our students did quite well because we got a report back to tell us how our children did before they did the program and after they did the program. And our children certainly did much better, I'd like to say, than a lot of the other school districts because our children consistently have education about drugs and making good choices. So a lot of that is going on and I just cannot say enough about Kathy Wright and the work that she does with our students to help them understand the choices that they make and when they do make a choice that's not the right choice she's right there to help support them and get them back on track because as mr. Moran said it's not just about you know feeling sorry and, and being sad about the state of things which sometimes they are bad but it's about hope 
and it's about helping kids to overcome some of those experiences. While our school-age children aren't necessarily the children that are succumbing to the statistics that you see along the highway and all throughout our county, they live in homes where those statistics originate, and they are a part of that, and they certainly could lead to, if we don't do our due diligence and ensuring that they know about, that they are aware of the choices that they make around drugs. Um, so I just am so thankful to all of the people who are a part of that. Of course, the LMB, I don't, I don't want to start naming names, but Mike Clark has just been so instrumental in that, along with Kathy Wright and a whole host of others, of certainly the, our county commissioners, Mr. Moran, all of the supporters of the public schools. You make it possible. We have to get our kids at the youngest ages. We have to prepare them, and that's what this is about. It takes a village and some more people to ensure that our kids get what they need and stay on the right track. So thank you. I certainly appreciate it. The doors of the schools are open, and we take all volunteers who want to be a part of ensuring that our kids get what they need. So thank you to all who are here tonight, and thank you for what you're doing for our children. Thank you, Dr. King. Before I announce our next speaker, uh, there's one organization that I uh, failed to mention, and they have my apologies, but it coincides with our next speaker, and that's the Department of Emergency Services. Your local law enforcement officers in the Department of Emergency Services are your first responders, and they're on the front line every single day in this county saving lives and bringing people back to life that have overdosed on drugs. Some of these responders and some of our local law enforcement officers may respond to two or three or more overdoses in a shift. And they may have to administer Narcan to the same person that they just administered Narcan to a week ago, an hour ago, 30 minutes ago. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And it's my honor to announce the next speaker, Queens County Sheriff Gary Hoffman. Thank you, First Sergeant. I'd like to first open up by saying, wow, what a crowd. I remember when Queen Anne's County, just the thought of Queen Anne's County goes purple, we never thought we would have this much enthusiasm for such a worthwhile cause. And this community, especially our community here in Queen Anne's County, has made such a difference. If I could have all the county commissioners come up here for a second. If I could have Warren Wright come up here for a second as well. You talk about the power of getting things done, and I, I genuinely mean that. A phone call was made to our county commissioners, our county commissioner president, Jim Moran, and his staff, and Warren Wright, and Queen Anne's County now has a brand new canine dog, which his name is Boss. So let's all welcome Boss. Sergeant Sean Hampton actually has Boss. And Boss is a five and a half month old black lab puppy. He came to us recently from Texas. He's only going to be trained on opioids and things like that, not marijuana. And Boss is going to help us in Queen Anne's County get ahead of and take a bite out of crime, as they would say. So the great benefit with Boss also is he is super friendly. He is the warm, fuzzy, lovable puppy that I've always wanted to have. Um, he is just, he'll lick you to death, but I'll tell you what, when it's time to get to work, boss knows his stuff and boss is going to get the job done. And when boss is not busy, boss will be around our schools, boss will be around our communities and around our kids. So boss is our newest community member in our fight for our opioid epidemic here in Queen Anne's County. I'd like to welcome boss and Sean Hampton, our sergeant is going to walk him around and thanks commissioners and thanks Warren for what you've done to help our county out. Okay, I'm done with the medic. Dr. Ciatola, I've been hitting the head twice with this thing. Okay, uh, our next speaker is an integral part of the event that I had previously announced, and that's our haunted trap house. This event, this event is going to be bigger than anybody can even imagine. I'm not going to give anything else away. I'll let him do that for you. So if I could welcome up Mr. Eric Johnson, the co-chair of the Haunted Trap House.
Thanks, Sonny. So Maggie Thomas and I are the co-directors of the Haunted Trap House Project. And I don't know about you all, but just standing here tonight and taking all this in, I have never been more proud to be a member of the Queen Anne's County community. So as Sonny mentioned, 30 years ago, it's hard to believe it's been that long. And just by a show of hands, how many of you were around to remember the Haunted Crack House? Awesome. So for those of you that were around, you remember that it was a project that was centered around Halloween, National Crime Prevention Month, and Red Ribbon Week. And our local police department in Centerville, Linda Walls, a host of community organizers put this innovative project together. It has since been done all over the world. It got international attention in the small town of Centerville 30 years ago. And already we have national attention by way of the Washington Post attending one of our recent meetings undercover to cover this innovation, this community mobilization that we've been able to spark here for the return of the Haunted Crack House as the Haunted Trap House. So we have a banner here. <laughs> Just wanted to show you. Uh, we're real thankful for Ch uh, Chad from Digital Curve Marketing helped us with the logo for this year's event that you see on the uh, left hand side. And one quick correction, it does say buy tickets now. You can't get them quite yet, but um, thanks to Beth Mulaski and Ashley Chenault, um, we have an Eventbrite page that you'll be able to buy tickets on. And so um, that's kind of the history. I wanted to just invite Maggie real quick to share kind of why is this so important now? Why is it called a haunted trap house? If you don't mind sharing that. I'm blown away at the amount of people that are here. It, it seems that there's a lot more than there were last year and I was blown away then too. Um, I think we all know why this event is important. We've all lost someone or known someone who's lost someone and it affects us personally. So what one of the things that I kind of came on board for is to bring the community together, but not just bring awareness, which is what Go Purple is, but to motivate people to do something. So bringing the community together and saying, okay, we have everyone's attention, now what? So we're gonna have petitions, we're gonna have a call to action at the end of the trap house, more to come. Um, so trap house, who knows what a trap house is? Raise your hand. Anybody? So basically, I have a 16 year old and a 14 year old in my house, and I would have no idea what a trap house is unless they told me. Um, but apparently, it's a genre of music. It has a lot to do with um, the lifestyle around drugs and things like that, and it, it's like a whole culture. So when we were tossing around ideas to put it out there to change the name and kind of update it, that was one of the names that the youth suggested. Now, I know it doesn't make sense to us of a certain age. Um, but to the kids who are trying to reach, which is high school and middle school, they know what it is. They're intrigued by the name and we're hoping to get them their interest peaked so that they come and visit. And that's the key. So I just want to thank everyone for coming and we hope to see you on the dates. It's going to be awesome. And one more quick thing. So on the table over here, there's lots of information about the project. Here's the big ask tonight. We need our teenagers to participate. If they're too shy to be an actor and actress, we have lots of opportunities, tour guides, set design, outside activities, but we desperately need um, teenage actors and actresses to play the part of themselves in the script. So if you have children, uh, nieces, nephews, grandkids, uh, neighbors, whoever they may be, please take some of the information that we have tonight and we look forward to seeing you all at the end of October at the Haunted Trap House Project. Thank you. So parents, take that to heart. The event won't be a success without plenty of help. So please volunteer yourselves or have your kids volunteer. It's a great activity. Okay, if I could uh, have Pastor Mark Fresnel from the Ken Island United Methodist Church Senior Pastor Fresnel come up for our closing prayer, and then we'll have our candlelight vigil. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we as Queen Anne's County have come together this evening and asked a very important question. Where does our help come from? It comes from you. It comes from your Holy Spirit empowering this community to stand up and to support one another. Gracious God, remind us that you've heard our prayers. You've read our petitions. You've seen those tears fall from our eye in the middle of the night when we're crying out to you. Lord God, as Queen Anne's County, we ask you to show up in a major way because we need you now more than ever. We ask that as we leave this place tonight that you will empower us to be in conversation, to share your word, to share the good word of Queen Anne's Ghost Purple 
We thank you and praise you, Lord, that it will make a difference in someone's life. And we thank you for making the difference in our lives to give us the strength to do so. So continue to hear our prayers, walk alongside of us, keep your promises, and love us more than we can ever imagine. As Queen Anne's County, gracious God, we say thank you in your precious name. Amen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and begin our candlelight vigil. If I could get someone to dim the lights for me, and if you have a candle, please light that candle in memory of those that you have lost, friends, family members, but also to give hope for those that are still with us to continue this fight. Let's hold those candles high. Let's let the highway see us here. Great job. Mm -hmm. 